well another section here about getting acquainted with Hispanics with Latinos that boy Smokey Barnes was so much bigger than any other seventh grader that once you'd met him, seen him, identified him, you were aware of him. And the next thing I know, I'm watching the kids at noon hour one day after school has started, and here is Smokey Barnes playing flag football and carrying the ball quite successfully. A kid that big and heavy? Whoa! But you take a look, Smokey's not too dumb about how to get a little advantage. He'd move those flags around where one was even with his belly button and the other one on the opposite side of him. Pretty hard to reach in there and get those flags for the guys that size. And besides that, he was remarkably nimble for such a big kid. Well, a couple of years go by, and in the seventh grade and the eighth grade, he goes out for basketball and he gets to play a little. I don't remember if he was the 6th or 7th or 8th, but he, he was on the team. We got to play a little. But man, he's starting to grow up. He's getting to be a man, not a fat little boy at all. So I approached the basketball coach when he's an 8th grader, when Smokey's an 8th grader, and said, are you going to be upset if I talk that kid into going out for wrestling? Because I got to look at the thing, here's a boy who could be a really outstanding wrestler. And he probably will never be an outstanding basketball player because at least the coaches that we had in the junior high and the senior high, they were after the fast, nimble kids. Well, of course, the coach said, no, I don't care. So Smokey and I have a conversation. The wrestling coach, of course, is delighted to have him come out. Smokey becomes a wrestler as a ninth grader, and on the first match of the season, he goes out and picks this kid up and squashes him. Pat. Pinned. Well, that went on for three or four matches, and then we went down to, I think it was Wheat Ridge, where there's a ninth grader who's bigger, bigger than Smokey, and who's been wrestling now for two or three years. He picked Smokey up and slammed him, scared the dickens out of him, hurt him. I'm sure it did hurt him. And the next thing you know, Smokey keeps losing and losing and even loses to that little guy he had around Robin thing that he could easily pick up and just smash and cut again. So I, it was a home meet when I saw that he just won't engage. He's, he, he's afraid he's been hurt too much. So I asked the wrestling coach, you care, you know, after the match and the kids are still in the showers and so on, I see the coach in the hall, you mind if I have a little talk with Smokey? He said, you might as well talk to him, he just turned in his uniform. So Smokey's leaving the building, and I said, hey Smokey, come in here a minute. So I was talking with him a little while, and I said, uh, yeah, you know, my older boy's a wrestler, and I'm not really a wrestler, but I believe I can whip you. Huh. No, Mr. Eggs, you can't do that. Well, I tell you what, you be at wrestling on Monday, and I'm coming out, and I'm going to pin you. At least I'll beat you. Well, of course, you know what he did. He turned me every way but loose, and he stayed on the wrestling team. At the end of the season there in Jefferson County, they had a junior high tournament to determine the best wrestlers in the various weights. I can't remember the score, but it was a low score, no pin. And he beat that kid that had picked him up and spun, spun him and was the champion. Incidentally, though, after that Monday that he wrestled me, Coach Sandoval and I had a little talk, and I said, you know, you have been teaching him the moves that a, a lightweight wrestler makes, I think maybe there's a difference in what heavyweights do. And so he and Coach Madrid got together and he started sending Smokey over part of the time to work out with the high school heavyweight who Tom, Tom, I can't remember his last name, another great wrestler. Learned a lot over there. He ended up in high school being the state champion. How about that?